Hello everyone, I am Destro, and this is Realm of the Lich King, and today we have something a little bit special for you guys. This is Gale Force 9's collector series Strahd Von Zarevich from the Curse of Strahd. I picked this up for my wife for a gift, and I'm going to be painting the mounted Strahd as part of that gift. On foot guys, all hers, but I'm doing the mounted one, so let's get down to it. So the first thing I noticed on assembling this model is that Strahd's horse has got some uh, pretty heinous gaps on it. And we're going to need to do something about that with the worst putty known to man, Milliput. A uh, pretty good gap fill though, get a little of that mixed up, use a little bit of water, and then you can just kind of push it into the gaps with your finger, smooth it out a little bit, and you'll have a nice, nice gap fill there. Uh, this didn't work out perfectly, I'm not the greatest at gap filling or anything, but it's a lot better than it would have been if I hadn't done that. With the gaps filled, time to prime it up and start painting. Decided to do the horse first, and decided to lead off with a bunch of contrast paint. It's going to be a black horse. And black is a uh, difficult color to paint. I talked about this a little bit during my Judisher video, but... Uh, it can be tricky to highlight it properly and, and have it come out as still looking black. Now, horses and uh, hair in general is a little bit shiny, so I went pretty high and stark on the, uh, the highlights here, but I, I tried to limit them to very, very small areas in order to allow most of the horse to continue to look black. And I also didn't worry too much about the middle, because that was where Strahd was going to be sitting anyways. With the horse's body done, it was time to do the flames. This is a nightmare, so instead of a mane and tail and all of that sort of thing, it has fire. I started out with a little yellow, and then most of what I did for the fire was overbrushing. A little bit like dry brushing, but you get more paint on the brush and just kind of strike at it so it catches on the raised surfaces. This is a pretty quick and easy way to paint fire. It won't come out looking fancy like if you do any uh, nice OSL or anything, but there's so many different light sources on this horse and it was going to be uh, in a lot of light anyway, so I didn't want to do anything too fancy or complicated. And this came out pretty nice anyways. It was a, a quick and easy effect and it looks good in the end. Right, that's it for the Nightmare, so it's time for Strahd using one of Vallejo's best paints, Dark Sea Blue. I'm going to be using Dark Sea Blue and blue in general quite a lot throughout painting Strahd. Uh, I wanted to give him kind of a more cool tone overall than I would use for perhaps a living character, for example. And so one of the things I did was play around with mixing other colors into flesh tones to make him look a little bit more pallid and, and dead. He's a vampire, he should look dead. But that's not to say he doesn't get any color of his own, and his vest I did in red. I'm trying to match uh, the box art, but also there's a couple of art pieces for him in the Curse of Strahd module that I really wanted to kind of emulate and have him match those. Speaking of the module, there's some nice lore pieces in there, delving into Strahd's history and other aspects of his character. In life, Strahd von Zarevich was a count, a prince, a soldier, and a conqueror. After the death of his father, King Berov, Strahd waged long, bloody wars against his family's enemies. He and his army cornered the last of those enemies in a remote mountain valley before slaying them all. Strahd named the valley Barovia after his deceased father, and was so struck by its scenic beauty that he decided to settle there. Strahd scoured his conquered lands for wizards and artisans, brought them to the valley of Barovia, and commanded them to raise a castle to rival the magnificent fortresses of his ancestral homeland. Strahd named the castle Ravenloft after his mother to demonstrate his love for her. When it was complete, Strahd commanded his mother and brother to come to Barovia and stay with him. Sergei, his brother, eventually took up residence at Ravenloft, 
but Queen Ravenovia passed away while traveling to her namesake. In sorrowful disappointment, Strahd sealed his mother's body in a crypt beneath the castle. Now at this point in his life, Strahd has already started studying dark magic, but he hasn't yet become the horrific monster that he will be, and we will get to that, but first I want to talk a little bit about the way I'm going to be painting the fur on his cloak. I spaced it with brown, as you can see, and I wanted to look, make it look a little bit like wolf fur. And wolf fur has a lot of browns and grays in it, so I've decided to go with basing it with brown and then going with gray over top to kind of make it look like a, like a wolf's fur, like a gray wolf. I think the effect is nice. I've tried it out before and I hope you guys like that as well. I've gone ahead and used the same grays for Strahd's hair, which I will be finishing off a little bit later after I've done some more work on his cloak and boots. Strahd's cloak is a sort of a grayish blue in the pictures that I've seen, and so I decided to go with uh, dark sea blue as the base for that, and then just use glacier blue to kind of mix into the dark sea blue, make a lot of different layers, and highlight it up so that it looks sort of like fabric. Painting fabric is one of the harder things you can do, really, and this is one of the better ways that I've found to do it, is to just do lots and lots of little layers, feathering the brush strokes so that it looks kind of uneven and, you know, like fabric. Fabric's not smooth, it's an uneven surface, it's uh, often a rough texture, and so you don't necessarily want to do perfect straight lines on it like you would with, say, armor. And the boots that I'm going to be doing for Strahd, uh, those I decided to go with black leather, just to be a little bit of contrast from the brown leather that I've used for some of the other things he's wearing. And so I started those with the blue as well, and I basically painted them the same way as the cloak, and then just came in at the end with uh, black Templar contrast to go over the top, dull down the highlights, and make them look a little bit more like black leather. I'm using the contrast paint on his hair as well, that'll impart a nice little bit of shininess to it and uh, dull down those highlights a little bit. It kind of dulled them down too much though, hair is supposed to be a little shiny, so I did come back in with some of the uh, wolf grey that I'd used earlier and applied a few more careful highlights just to bring that back up a little. Now then. <clears throat> Strahd's attention soon turned to Tatiana, a young Barovian woman of fine lineage and remarkable beauty. Strahd believed her to be a worthy bride, and he lavished Tatiana with gifts and attention. Despite Strahd's effort, she instead fell in love with the younger, warmer Sergei. Strahd's pride prevented him from standing in the way of the young couple's love until the day of their wedding, when Strahd gazed into a mirror and realized he had been a fool. Strahd murdered Sergei and drank his blood, sealing the evil pact he'd made with the dark powers of the Shadowfell. He then chased Sergei's bride to be through the gardens, determining to make her accept and love him. Tatiana hurled herself off a castle balcony to escape Strahd's pursuit, plunging to her death. Treacherous castle guards, seizing the opportunity to rid the world of Strahd, shot their master with arrows. But he did not die. The dark powers honored the pact they had made. The sky went black as Strahd turned on the guards, his eyes blazing red. He had become a vampire. After slaughtering the guards, Strahd saw the faces of his father and mother in the thunderclouds, looking down upon him and judging him. He had destroyed the family bloodline and doomed all of Barovia. The castle and the valley were spirited away, locked in a demiplane surrounded on all sides by deadly fog. For Strahd and his people, there would be no escape. With that, that's the end of Strahd's backstory, and the stage is set for the player characters to come in and, with a little bit of luck, maybe do something about him. That's also the end of me painting all of the non-metallic details. Strahd's face was real tricky and I had to go back and forth a bunch on the eyes and all of that just to get it looking right, but I did finally get it somewhere I wanted and we moved on to doing the metallics. I've decided to do the armor metallics with a kind of a bluish purple glaze to keep the cool colors rolling and to give them a little bit of a sort of magic-y look to them. The buttons and things I did bronze, and then the gold, of course, I had to use Vallejo's old gold, because I really do love that color. I love the effect you get from just putting some sepia ink over it and bringing it up with polished gold at the end. And, yeah, we're getting real close to the end here. Plate mail metal to bring back down the purple, so it doesn't look too purple. I just wanted the purple and to be kind of in the recesses of the armor, to give it a bit of an otherworldly kind of sheen to it. So I decided to go ahead and just use regular metal colors over the top. The point wasn't to make it not look like metal, I still wanted it to look like metal in the end. 
But uh, yeah, with that, that's the last thing that needed to be painted on him. He needed to stick him on his horse, get him off his painting base, but with that, he's done. So here he is, Strahd von Zarevich, the Vampire Master of Barovia. I had a lot of fun painting this guy. Uh, I think he was a cool little painting project. He was a fun vampire to do. And uh, ideally, I would have had this out a while ago for October, but, uh, you know, life got in the way. Still, though, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. I'll get you a nice close-up of Strahd's face here in a second, so you can see a little bit of the work that went into that. Hopefully make out some of the details, the magenta on the lips, to give those a slightly different shade. But that's it for me. That's the end of the video. I've been Destro. You've been great. I hope to see you guys again next time.